A tissue sample is a great way to help determine the nutrients that are actually getting into the plant versus a soil test which provides us the levels of the nutrients in the soil. Tissue samples should be taken one to two times a year, and those often can be taken in conjunction with soil tests. Results from tissue samples will help you to fine tune your nutritional program, which will also complement the results from a soil test. I generally recommend conducting turf tissue sampling at the beginning of the growing season and towards the end of the growing season. In the southern climates, up to four tissue samples a year are great. Uh, more northern climates, one to two times a year is sufficient. When conducting tissue samples, site selection is really important. You really want to make sure that the site you're sampling is representative of the turf conditions. For example, if you have a putting green that has different soil types within that putting green root zone, you want to make sure that you sample each site separately. Uh, some may, in some cases it's okay to pool turf tissue samples from uh, say the front nine and the back nine, but you really want to make sure that the root zone conditions and the turf types of each of those sampling areas is extremely uniform. If we have a situation where the root zone conditions are different from green to green and pulling those samples will really decrease the validity of those tissue test results. When collecting tissue samples, try to wait five to seven days following fertilization, top dressing, application of any sort of foliar products or chemicals. Contamination of those sources could lead to tissue samples which don't really reflect the fertility status of your soil. Here's an example where we have a granular fertilizer that has been caught in the baskets. Uh, granular fertilizers that contain nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium can really throw off your tissue samples. All right, following collection of the tissue samples, it's always a good idea to remove debris from the baskets. Also, you want to confirm that there isn't any sand or fertilizer that has potentially contaminated the clippings. Always use a paper bag when collecting tissue samples. Paper bag allows the, the tissue to, uh, to air dry properly. You don't want it to keep any extra moisture in, in the bag that would uh, potentially degrade the sample. Ziploc bags, any sort of plastic lined bags, uh, try to avoid when uh, collecting the tissue samples. Sample size collection is really important when conducting tissue sampling. There really isn't a need to fill the entire bag as the lab will use about one to two grams for the digestion process and then the analytical test. So in general, what you'd like to do for uh, tissue sampling collection purposes is fill about one-third of the bag and that'll give the lab plenty of sample to mix and then collect a subsample for their laboratory purposes. Following collection of the tissue samples, it's always a good idea to make sure that the sample gets sent to the lab as rapidly as possible. Tissue tests that sit around in an office or in a car will begin to degrade and reduce the validity of the tissue test results. Labeling of the sample is extremely important. Make sure that the label has the date, the area sampled, and include any notes which might best describe the area sampled. For example, if it's a good area or an area of poor quality, make sure that that's noted on the bag. And also keep a separate set of notes that reflect the identification on the bag for your future reference in case there's a mix-up somewhere along the line. 